to the AI Explained video series. So today I'm going to tell you about the different types of explanations for machine learning models. So, so as we all know, uh, complex black box machine learning models are rapidly spreading to various high stakes domains like, you know, lending, insurance, healthcare, criminal justice, and so on. So, so <clears throat> consequently, the need for for transparency and explainability for these models is also rapidly growing. So as a result, uh, in the last few years, there have been a variety of different methods uh, for, for explaining black box models. So in this video, I'm going to tell you about the, the broad types of explanations that these, these methods offer. The first kind of explanation is uh, to explain a model with another model. So this is what you call build a surrogate model. To explain this. So you have a black box model and to explain it we we build a more interpretable model, you know, say a decision tree or a linear model that mimics this one. So it's a model that is going to predict the predictions of the model of this black box model. Now of course if the model at hand is complex and highly nonlinear then you're not going to be able to fit a very interpretable model on it on it globally. So instead what you do is you explain the, the behavior of this black box model locally. So this is what the popular line method does. What it does is it fits local linear models in the vicinity of, of various inputs. So if you want to explain the prediction of a particular input, you build a linear model that mimics the behavior of the, of the, of the black box model in the vicinity of the input. Another family of attribute of, of explanation methods is, uh, is, is based on attributions. So here the idea is to explain a prediction by attributing it to features of the input. So the attributions are essentially scores that you assign to every feature that's proportional to the feature's contribution. So this is sort of a feature importance method. In the vision, in, in, in the computer vision literature, these are often called as saliency methods because they highlight the salient regions of the image for a particular prediction. There's a further subdivision within attribution methods. You know, there's, there's one group of methods that are based on gradients. These largely apply to non-different to non-linear like deep models and other differentiable models. Another family of methods is are based on perturbations. And these are typically applied to these non-differentiable models like boosted trees, random forests, and so on. Yet another kind of method is a uh, kind of explanation is contrasted explanations. So here the idea is uh, to highlight the features that ought to be present for this prediction and that ought to be absent for this prediction. So if you have let's say a lending model then I'd say that for this loan applicant to be for this application to get accepted the income ought to stay at this level and the number of delinquencies ought to be zero. Because if either of this, if the income was lower, then the prediction would change drastically, or if the delinquencies went up, then the prediction would change drastically. So in a sense, you highlight the pertinent positives that should be there, and the pertinent negatives. Another class of method that are recently getting very popular are counterfactual or recourse based explanations. So the first three methods, surrogate modeling, attribution, contrasted explanations, they are sort of explaining why this prediction, you know, what were the factors that went into this particular prediction. The, these recourse-based explanations are tackling a different question. They say, how should the input change to obtain a different prediction? So in particular, you, you, you ask this question for instances that get unfavorable prediction. You know, let's say there's an application, there's a there's an application for which the prediction is, there's a loan application for which the prediction is reject, reject. So then you say, how should features of this application change so that it gets accepted? You know, how should, you know, how should the income change or the FICO change or, or the other factors of this application change? So these are, this is what is called sort of recourse. You know, what is the path to recourse towards a favorable outcome? So the last family of, 
explanation methods I want to tell you about are example based explanations. So here the idea is to uh, explain a prediction on an input by highlighting other inputs, let's say from the training set or some data set that are similar to this one. So uh, to, uh, the, the, the closest analog of this would be uh, comparables and home prices. You know, when you, know, when you price a house, the best way to justify, you know, how, the way realtors justify the price of a house is they say, they look at comparables. You say, this house is priced at this amount because look, these other similar houses in your neighborhood were all, you know, all recently sold for a similar amount. And therefore, I think that this house should also sell for this amount. So this is sort of the key idea in example-based explanations where I'm telling you about other examples that have similar that have similar predictions as the example at hand. Uh, you can imagine example-based explanations being used in healthcare where, uh, let's say you're making some sort of a medical diagnosis using a model, then the explanation could be, you know, I'm predicting uh, this particular, you know, this set of symptoms to have this disease because in the past I've seen similar cases which had these symptoms and, and, and were labeled with the disease. And so that's, that's how I explain these predictions. So there you go. So these are sort of five broad families. So there is surrogate model building, surrogate model based explanations. There are attribution based explanations, contrasted explanations, counterfactual explanations and example based explanations.